Happy Mother's Day once again. The Lord will bless you all and enrich you in the mighty name of Jesus. And can I just encourage your mothers, don't, or the women in the house, don't take lightly the proclamation that was actually said over us today. Because something in the spirit has actually shifted. So to those people who reached out to it, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, this morning, uh, for, I, mean, I mean, our time is fast, but I'll, just, I'll do my best within the time that we have. This morning is primarily going to be about encouraging one another. It has been two fulfilling months for me as a person. It has been two amazing months. And why do I say that? You know, over, since we started the, yes, this is the month of March, and I know we, we've all started with the Lord, but over the last two months we've been looking at spiritual growth. Have we grown spiritually? It is both a rhetoric and also me, I'm asking that question to myself and to all of us. So that we can pause and see growth, like I've said here before when I had the privilege to minister, growth always has an evidence. If we say growth, there must be a before and an after. So whilst I won't belabor the point, I just want to throw it to us so that we can see that God has actually, no matter how small, you will see that you have grown. No matter how little, you can see if you are truly following what the Spirit has been saying in the church. Bible says, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. If you have been having an ear, you will see that and you've been yielding, there has been some growth. So I just want to encourage you to hang in there. Because until the day that the Lord Jesus will come, you and I will not stop growing. You don't, you don't get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Until Jesus returns, there's not going to be a day of holiday to say, oh, or a fulfillment and say, I'm actually no longer growing. And God is the only one that is permitted not to grow. And you understand what I'm saying? How can God grow? Can God change? Is God not the same yesterday, today, and forever? Is He not the one that we are latching onto and hoping on? He's not going anywhere. He's not growing anywhere. There's nothing you and I can do that will make God to be, become more faithful or to make him more loving. He is all constant. When he was standing with Moses and he said, go to Egypt, his description of himself was, I am the I am. God is not changing. So, you see, unless someone would, in a blasphemous way, say, I am God, you will need to keep growing. I need to keep growing. So that's why this month is so crucial that if you can just latch onto it, don't, don't worry about the big picture in the sense of, oh, how come I'm still where I am? It's a good thing for you to consider and say, why am I still where I am? But just know within your heart that God is taking you somewhere. You remember what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews? It said, we are being what? Sanctified. It is an ongoing thing and it's a process. So, you know, this month, as the Lord has been helping us in this place, and through pastor and people that have come here to share and to minister, you know, our brothers and our ministers coming to tell us about spiritual growth. We have learned so many things. And I can just see, and it really encourages me when I see the youth there, they put, bring their notes out and they're writing. That was the atmosphere I grew up in. When I got born again, you grew up in a place where you get your notes out and you're writing. You know what you're doing? You're saying, I may have heard it before, but I'll pen it down regardless. Because when you, have, when you get home, something will hit you from that moment that you wonder, how come it's still the same word? So, you know, we've been writing so many things down and God has been revealing himself to us day in, day out. Can I just submit to us that those things that we have been taking in, they are meant to do something inside of us. Amen. Those words that we have received, they are meant to bring about a change somehow. Whether you have been good before, can I tell you, you have been challenged to become better. Amen. Over the last couple of few weeks, I have been challenged in my, own, in, my, in, in my life. And even the word that we are coming with this one that the Lord has put in my heart, because when pastor told me about this, from the beginning of the month of March, in fact, a few days after the, the, the month started, I, was, I prayed to God and I asked God, what would you have us to share? Because it's almost like, you know, when you're dealing with spiritual stuff, it's big, it's huge. And I don't want to come here and stand and begin to say things like theory, or say things that we already know. They are, they, virtually most of the things that have been said, you've heard them before. But I was asking that, God, what is it that you have specifically to say to the people? And brethren, what the Lord told me, I was encouraged the week after, and I, and I started to look up to God for that from the very beginning of the month. And that's why I know that this day, 
your life will never remain the same again in Jesus' name. Yeah. Because we are going to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. We, you see, it's not, God is not coming down. It's, you are going to destroy it. But you know what your advantage is? The Bible says, pulling down every stronghold. Through whom? Through God. If God is on your side, every stronghold will be coming down in your life in the name of yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And what I have to share to us this morning is titled, One Day at a Time. Someone say, One Day at a time. That was what the Lord was expressly speaking in my heart. That was why I was very excited. The Lord showed me something about this, and I knew that this was what, and I've been constantly you know, looking up to go for what He has for us. So it may not be for long. I don't know how it's going to tell. I don't know how the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us this morning. But I am persuaded that someone will catch a light today in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, we, we sing that song, that uh, Nigerian song that says, Yesterday is gone, today I'm in need. Yesterday is gone, today I'm in need. You see, every human being, as long as you've got breath in you, we are always going to have a need. As long as you've got breath in you, you're always going to have a need. And there is no need that is greater than needing Jesus. You see, a man can say, I've got loads of things, I've got assets, I've got this and that. No matter what you have, no matter your position in the society, if your greatest need still remains to be saved. And that's why I'm grateful to God for my life that I'm saved. That I'm, not, I'm no longer treading the path that I once was treading. And I'm thanking God that I'm, I'm worshipping in the midst of people who have made the same decision. Because the greatest need any man would have, the greatest need, you might be hungry, you might need clothing, you might be cold and you need shelter. They are all very good and they are needful. But the greatest need a man would have is, is Jesus. Because from the beginning, God had a plan. He wanted fellowship. Through sin, that fellowship was tampered with. So when God is saying that for, uh, to everyone who believes in his son will not perish, that means it is the greatest need you and I can ever have. That is why the passion for souls, and I'm so grateful where the Lord is leading the leadership, is that, as, that we know what we have now, we have eternity, that others who are around us also might be able to tap into this eternity. Because that's the greatest need any man can ever have. But you see, the Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 68, it says, God does what? He daily loads us with benefit. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, God daily loads us with benefit. And I'm going to read one of the three, two scriptures just to, set us, to, to start us off this morning. Can we open our Bibles to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2? 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 12. And I read, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, I'll, I'll start from 11. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust with war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of salvation. Just put, mark that day of salvation and just stay with me and we're going to read another scripture. Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. We all know the scripture but there's somewhere that God wants to take us to today. You see because this, um, all the messages we've heard about spiritual growth, like I said, they're meant to change us, they're meant to do something inside of us and if you're taking the word of God seriously, this change will become evident sooner or later. Sooner or later, they will become evident. But I want you to realize that all these change that we're talking about is not meant for you to overwhelm yourself with them. Daily, we need that walk with the Lord. Daily, we need to trust God. You see, I don't know why God is just hitting on the word daily. Because I, when you look at it, if you wake up and for a day and you're living in the same house, and your child does not reckon with you. Your child does not even consider you. How would you feel as a parent? It doesn't even show the, a sign of trust. It doesn't show any sign that you feel that the, the, the man or the father, the parent, is capable of looking after you. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 68, I think verse 19, that God daily loads us. When the psalmist was singing, he said, the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. So daily, no wonder Jesus was teaching the disciples to pray. He says, in this manner, pray. Give me my daily bread. 
Why is it not that God you can just supply me a week's uh, portion? After all, you are a God that knows all things. You are a God that sees, and you can do everything. And you know that He even helps me to, when you give me my daily bread for a week, I can free you some time and I can go and sort other people out, rather than me having to come and disturb you every day. And God is saying, who told you I disturbed? Do you know who? Am I limited by space or time? I want uh, your devotion to be on a daily basis. And that's the word that God is speaking to us today. One day at a time. Spiritual growth that we are referring to. Don't overwhelm yourself with the spiritual growth and think, oh, I'm just going to suddenly appear as Paul. Even Paul, where he got to before he said it is finished, he went through stages. But those stages, do you know that they are actually physical? They are geographical. It's time bound. Every day you must wake up. Only the dead cannot reason with what we are saying now. When you are alive, every day counts. Your today is so relevant for your tomorrow. Because if you look at it, tomorrow will never emerge if today has not been executed. Today will never come forth if today the curtains of today has not folded. So if tomorrow is inevitably going to come at the Lord tarrying, that means what we do today does count in the eye of God. That's why Jesus said, in a manner to pray, pray this way. Lord, give me my daily bread. Don't be asking God for that. If God chooses to give you the bread for the entire week, He will, because He can. Remember the people of Israel. He told them at some point, He said, you gather so that you can have surplus. And another time as well, He told them, He said, no, just gather per what? Time. It tells me what God is after is, I'm just looking for a people who will be dependent on me. So in their dependence, if I tell them, gather for one week, what do we do? Gather for one week. If I tell you, gather for one day, gather for one day. But God is saying to all of us that we must have a walk with him and it must be daily. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to keep, please permit me, keep stress because that's what the Lord laid in my heart. And that's the experience I've been having. Daily walk with the Lord. So Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. This is going to be the anchor. And please, don't, I don't want to lose anyone. Just follow me closely, please. We all know the scripture. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things shall be added unto you. It says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Did we just establish that tomorrow will come? Yes. Tomorrow will eventually come. But why is God saying to us and saying, you see that tomorrow that will inevitably come? Don't give it thought. Why is God saying that? God is saying, be someone who today that you have, that you have you, you, you've woken up from your bed, let it be that you are looking up to me for what you are going to have today, for your experiences today. What I will be speaking to you, it will be fresh on a daily basis. I need your attention daily. The tomorrow is sometimes what we overwhelm ourselves with, and the enemy capitalizes on that. I know it's very spiritual, I know it's very zealous. He's looking to become this, he's looking to get there. But do you know where you are getting to? In fact, the promise of God that he has given to us is dependent on what we do, the action. And this is scriptural. It's in the Bible. If you see what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, it says, and you take those who through what? Faith, faith and patience obtain what? The promise. That means God said he has promised, but he's still looking for people who will be faithful, who will have faith in them. And say, Lord, I will be patient enough. If you are saying, God, but I got your promise. And you want to do things by your own strength. Do you know you can miss along the line? But if God has promised you, as he's speaking a word to you, he's wanting to check you daily. And he can deal with us differently. You remember, I've said it here daily. Any that we're That's talking about is going to be an ongoing thing. But whilst we are not where we ought to be, we will trust God every day. Whilst you are not where you want, you want to be, you, will you trust God daily? Will you listen to him daily? Will you choose to not worry about tomorrow? Because the Bible is saying that Jesus was speaking here and saying, don't give it thought about tomorrow. Do you know why he's saying that? Who is the God of yesterday, today, and forever? He has seen your tomorrow, but he's wanting to walk with you from today. He's wanting you to, he's looking for obedience. I love the song that one uh, gospel singer sang. And some of you may know him and some of you may not, but it's someone that blessed me for many years since I gave my life to Christ, Keith Green. I don't know if some, anybody knows Keith Green here. Powerful man of God. You can go and watch him and go and look at his biography. That man is a powerful man of God. And he sang a song. He's saying, to obey, and we know the scripture from 1 Samuel, 
To obey is better than sacrifice. I want more than your Sundays and your Wednesdays. In fact, when I, when I heard the Sunday, I was thinking that's the same Sunday and Wednesday we have here as well. He said, but God is saying to us, I want more than your Sundays and your Wednesdays. If you cannot come to me, I'm singing the song now, I'm just reading it out. If you cannot come to me every day, then don't bother coming at all. That song will always reverberate in my heart. If you cannot come to me every day, don't bother coming at all. What is this telling us? Your daily walk with the Lord is as crucial as the promise he has given to you. Our daily walk with the Lord is as crucial as that place we are going to. Because every action we take today will take, is, is, is guiding us towards where? That final destination. The destination is not what we should use to, to confuse ourselves or to become depressed or discouraged. You just say, God, I know that I'm not there yet. I know that I still struggle with this or that. But have you not said that I can do all things through Christ? Yesterday you helped me. Last year I remember I had an experience you helped me. But things are not working out with this time. But I still trust. It's not movable. It's immovable. If you believe and trust God that he can never change and is worthy. In fact, every promise is meaningful in the light of the person who promises. If you give me a promise now, tell me who promised. Every promise, I'll say it again, it is meaningful in light of the promiser. If the promiser is God, then go and sit, go and sit down. Because it is a done deal. It may take time. It may take a different method compared to what you have thought, but it will surely come to pass. Amen. But give me a promise of who has no integrity. Don't count on that promise. How many of us are counting on the promise of God here? I am counting on the promise of God. But he's telling me in my walk, he saying, walk with me one step at a time. One step at a time. One day at a time. He's looking for my dependence every day. You know, I will not, I will not go before God and say, and many of us shouldn't. Lord, I trusted you yesterday. Today, I just want to take a break. I'll trust you tomorrow. First Peter chapter 2 verse 12. In the day of what? Visitation. Is there anyone here who knows that day of visitation? Is there anyone here who knows the time, the hour, the minute? Even Joseph, a promise was set forth concerning his destiny. And if Joseph had said, because God has said, this, everyone will bow to me, my family and everything. And he does not reckon with the fact that in the, in the midst of my journey, I can encounter someone called Potiphar's wife. And if I cannot remember that, even though God has promised me, because God has promised me, some of us will say, it will surely still happen. I will go and sleep with promise, uh, Potiphar's wife. The promise is there. It has been given by a promise of who has great integrity. But the journey every day is as crucial. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, if you, uh, even in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, if you don't faint, then you will obtain what? The promise. If you don't faint, you will obtain the promise. So for us, our own expectation is that God every day, like Christine sang the song, yesterday is gone. Yesterday is gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way, one day at a time. I love that song so much. Say, so yesterday is done. I can't do anything about it. I love what Paul says in the book of Romans, uh, Philippians chapter 3. Say, I forget that which is behind. That I'm sure that's where that song came from. And I press on, which means today, daily. I press on. What is Paul pressing for? Do we remember what Paul was pressing for? He said he was pressing for the price. There is a price for you and I. At the end. Now that price, when God promised us the price, will he give it to us when we get there? Yeah. I'm asking, will he give it to us? Yeah. God will give us that price because the promise of God is a God of integrity. He's a man, it's not a, it's not a man that he will lie. So what he has said, he will surely do. But in looking at the price, he's now saying, like Paul, I will press on the do you know what that pressing means? Paul is saying that even though I know that there's the price of a mark of a higher calling. It's not going to just come to me anyhow. It's going to come with a price. P-R-I-C-E. That price will come with me paying a price. And that price, Paul was saying, I press on. Now, Paul, did Paul live in skips, in increments? That Paul lived today and by, he just went dormant. And he started living again in March. And by April, Paul was not breathing. No, Paul was living daily like you and I. We are men of like passion. But Paul was saying that every day counts for me. I press on to the mark of the higher calling. That's what that song was saying. Yesterday is gone sweet Jesus. I'm grateful. Many of us are thankful. He said, tomorrow I don't have a guarantee of it. This is not being negative. 
Is there anyone here that you can vouch and say, we know the promise of God is that we shall not die. But the ultimate say, the one who posts the plot is God. That's why he's saying to us, be ready. Be ready. Because the, the, what is happening is, it can be by rapture. But are you ready? It's every day counting. I think I've shared this before when I, was, when I first got born again. And I was singing the song. It was how the song came to me. The songwriter was saying, I will live every moment as though it's the last. And I remember my mom stepping into the room. I said, keep quiet. And I said, what? What have I said? I even was wondering if I said anything wrong. Because as a mother, my son is saying, I will live every moment as though it is the last. She's thinking, <laughs> we are not going anywhere. And I get that. But if you look at it spiritually, I am not being negative. All I'm saying is, I want to be ready. Because the day of visitation, you and I, we don't have that sin. You see, Jesus was not trying to be all spiritual to all of us and to say, because I am God and I am man, the day I am coming, I know it. He said, only the Father knows. I won't stand here and say that I have it all and I know it all. No one can. But what we're saying is, tomorrow, the sovereign is saying, tomorrow may. He didn't say, will not. He said, when I say, tomorrow will not be mine, then please come and pray for me. Because what I've said, I've directly said to myself, I'm not leaving tomorrow. Is it for me to say? It's God's. I'll leave that to him. So the songwriter will say, tomorrow may never be mine. And it's to say, I want to sing that song. He said, but Lord, help me today. Someone said today. Today. You see, the victory that we are talking about, growing spiritually, it's a daily thing. As we are walking, no, nobody would, the devil is very subtle. Nobody wakes up every day and just says, today I will just be bad. Today, I would, I would be disrespectful to my boss. Today, I'm going to connect to internet and I'll start watching pornography. No one will do that. The enemy is subtle. He too knows that principle. Every day counts. So the way we come, it comes very in a subtle manner. So if it can crush you today, you know what the devil is going to do? It's not going to come, to, it's not going to just retire. Say, I've got him today. What is it going to do? Your tomorrow counts to him as well. So he will go and wait for you tomorrow and to do the same thing. But you know the victory that we have is to understand. You see, understanding is important. That's why the Bible says, in all you're getting, get understanding. You see, today, my today is relevant for my tomorrow. And Jesus, my Savior, is telling me, said, Larry, don't worry about tomorrow. See, the victory of today is what I'm looking for. So even though I have failed to be, because sometimes what the enemy does to us is, I remember when I got born again, and he had spread, I mentioned this before, and he had spread before I got to where I was living. Because I was at the time quite popular. By the time they, I got to my room, one of my best friends came to me and said, I heard that you are born again. You see, bef before that time, I think I've said it before, I have always, and I've said it somewhere here in the church, I have always, maybe due to how the people that I had and the friendships that I had, I thought it was going to be impossible for me to really walk the walk with God because of the people that I had. And I remember when I gave my life to Christ, I said, God, you know my weakness. It is people. If you can just help me with these people, and all I need is boldness. Give me boldness. That's what I asked for. So when this guy came, he was my best friend. We did things together. So he said, he just joking, he said, when I said, yes, it's true. <laughs> you, I know you. By the time X, Y, and Z happens, you are with us again. I see if he was even directly saying that God is not on his side. He said, I know you. That was what he said. He knew me according to the flesh. What he was trying to present to me through the devil was that, see, let me give you a, a picture of your future. In the past, it seemed as though you were about, you were becoming, you, you know, God-like. But then what happens to you eventually? You are still with us. So sometimes the devil come and remind you of your past feelings and say, did you not try and try and try? Maybe out of your own strength. Or maybe you've done everything. And you still come to remind yourself, you are still going to be back in this position. You know what you should be telling the enemy from today? Say, thank you. The truth is, you don't own tomorrow. My God owns tomorrow. And he has told me that I should not worry about tomorrow. So it is possible what you are saying is going to happen. But I don't want to bother myself about that, what you are saying, what you are telling me. Because that's not my reality. My reality is in the word of God. And he's saying, he daily knows me with benefit. If it is benefit coming to me daily, that means I'm going to him daily. That means God is interested in me daily. I want to seek my victory on a daily basis. You see, when you practice victory upon victory upon victory, tomorrow you will become a habitual thing. That tomorrow that they are talking about, you will see yourself. It doesn't mean you won't fail, but the stars they were telling me that I'll become, by the grace of God, I have not returned to Egypt. 
But the, the pronouncement not come to me that, but I know by the time so those things still happen, brethren. The things that my friend was because he knew me. Those things still happen. But I am standing here today by the grace and the mercy of God. Because God has said to us, don't worry about tomorrow. Spiritual growth is what we are looking at this month. You are growing spiritual, I tell you, brethren. Somehow, the Lord is speaking to you and you are growing. But let me encourage you. Seek him daily. If the, God, if the enemy comes to you and lies to you and tells you that I know by tomorrow, you see, tomorrow is not going to come unless this day. Let me live today first. Let me live today. That's what God is telling us. He said, don't, worry, don't overwhelm yourself. You can cripple your tomorrow because of how you are living today. And you can also make your tomorrow good by how you are living. That's why I said, by faith and patience, people can obtain the promise and you too can obtain that promise. Daily walk with the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. By trusting daily just means that we are recognizing who God is in our lives. You know, I said it before, if someone is someone you can trust, someone that you believe in and believe has the power to do all things, every day you go to him, what you are indirectly saying is, I know that you are able. Thank you for what you did for me yesterday. Today I know that there is a daily bread and I want it, I need it. Give it to me. God is seeing someone who is doing that as a humble person. And I'll tell you what I mean by you. You are saying, I don't have it all figured out. Some of us have even grown more than others. But what you're still saying each day is that no matter where you have grown to, you, have, you would never have come to the point of saying you finished everything all until the day that we are folding. When Paul said that there was no, no, no further ministry, he was going. Until that day happens. That's why the scripture says we are being sanctified. God is looking at us when we have that daily attitude and saying, this one is looking for me to speak. You know when God said to Isaiah, this one has a quickening ear. I said to Isaiah, go and speak to Ezekiah to carry, to put his house in order. For what shall happen, he shall do what? Die. If Isaiah was a man that did not have that, that regular relation, is the regularity we're talking about. That is the habit, it's, an, it's not something that, you know, when we go to God or we go and pray, we are going by circumstance or by things that happen. What God is telling us in this church is our spiritual growth. Let it be that it becomes a part and parcel of it. It's a bit like driving. Today, I don't consider when I'm driving. I don't consider the indicator. I don't consider the turtle. But when I first started stealing driving, I said stealing because I didn't learn the proper way. I would just grab the car, grab the keys, and start driving. And thank God I've not killed anybody. But that time, I would just grab the car and start driving. But my, I'm sweating. It may not be cold. You know why? I'm looking at the honk that I just heard there. Um, the car is coming from that angle. Oh, I've got to in two plus. If I, and if I dare hear that, you know when you press both the top, I'm afraid. Do you know why? It's not yet a part and parcel of me. I drive now, not that I'm a skillful person, but I drive now, I don't think about it. Spiritual growth. Walk with the Lord daily. Let that be your consciousness. That God, every day that I wake up, that you give me the grace to be alive. I just want to walk with you. I just want to obey you. Now, I'm a miss along the way, which is what the enemy comes to trip us up. I mean, but that's not defining who I am. You have said to me that tomorrow will worry for itself. Job said that there are many, in the life of a man, they are, the man's life is full of troubles. And the Bible even says also that, in that verse 34 that I didn't read for us. Now let's do that together. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Are you seeing that? In the day, the Bible is saying, just, just not being negative. He said, in the day, if I want to open your eyes to see, you will see enough trouble. Boom, plenty of it. It is enough. If you start to worry yourself about that problem of tomorrow, it's not going to help you. But he's saying in verse 10, to seek first the kingdom of God. That's what I want to do daily. And I don't want to seek God today and forget him tomorrow. Or in the time of my want or my lack, I am so prayerful. Now he's delivered it into my hands. God is no longer relevant. Or in second place, that daily benefit, daily bread. That's why Jesus said, give me my daily bread. Let that be your prayer. That every day, Lord, I want to worry so much. I want, to, I want to be focused on my daily encounter and walk with you. Not being wrapped up in tomorrow. Because you can overwhelm yourself so much with tomorrow that you cripple the, what the Lord wants to do in your life today. See, to, tomorrow when it eventually comes, that tomorrow becomes what? Your today. You know today that we are in. Yesterday was called today. To, tomorrow now will be called today. So God is saying it's not really about that overall, that time. It is just about that experience you are having with me per time. Joseph had a promise, but he needed to live through the day. None of us know the day of visitation. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know if someone is getting something this morning. Yes. God is faithful. I am convinced 
beyond any reasonable doubt that the Lord wants us as a people to consider our daily work with Him. You see, to, yesterday is gone. Let's forget our past failures. This is serious that the Holy Spirit is speaking to my heart this morning. He's wanting that serious daughter and serious son. And I remember saying last week, and the Lord has not let it go out of my heart. In the beginning of, I think this morning, last month, when the Lord said to me, I kept telling my wife, that what the Lord is going to be doing in this church or in the body of Christ, there's the sifting that he's doing. And I said it here before, it was not easy for me to say, and it's still not easy, but I will say it anyway. That he's doing the sifting, and that sifting is not going to be something we doubt it, we'll see this clear. Because when you find dirt, if everything is dirty, you don't see any distinction. But the same thing God is going to be doing is, it will make something that is clean out of that dirt to be obvious. And if you find things that are clean, the only thing that is dirty will become obvious as well. But which part are you going to stand in? He said, who is on my side and come? Left or right? Sheep and go, let's separate them. You know the promise, you just go right ahead and align with it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But you see, we're not without hope. The animals that we see around today, so that you don't quote me tomorrow. You know what you say, oh, Brother Larry did say, let's just leave for the day. That means I don't plan for my tomorrow. That means I'm not, that, that means my tomorrow is no longer relevant. We just, we, just, we just break through the times. That is not what I'm saying. We do so differently, we do so with hope. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The animal, the dogs, the pigeon, they live for the day. So if we don't have that distinction, we're just like birds and dogs. They live for the moment. If no dog would be, I'm just because I used to own dogs. I don't know, I believe no dog would just be in the house just thinking about well, by tomorrow, mm, I'm just going to go and greet that dog in another street. No. If the dog passes by, it goes to work the tail and play with the person. Mm. They're living for the moment. Even the food they're eating. They're not going to think tomorrow, will my boss give me food? No. If he's looking for food, scavenges around, or ask the boss, and I'm talking about, I, I don't think dogs in this country will scavenge for food, because their food is even better than our, our human meat. But I'm talking from an African perspective. If a dog is hungry, he's going to scavenge all around to look for food. But the dog is not considering, what will I do tomorrow? We are different from that. We are living for the day, but with the hope of tomorrow. And that hope of tomorrow is eternity, and that's what's guiding our action today. You see, if you lose that part, that hope of eternity, the living for the day is not is no longer relevant. It's no longer powerful and no longer has an impact. Because I'm living for the day because I don't know the day of visitation. The ten virgins, when they were going, if, if all of them knew exactly when it would be, I'm sure they would all be ready. But you and I, we know, the Bible says that when the times and the seasons are changing, we know that you know it's about to be winter or summer. He said also, why is it that you guys don't realize that the time is short and it is now? So now because of that understanding that the time is near, I want, as I live my daily life, to be in accordance with that eternity that is in view. Because eternity is in view. And whether you would like to believe it or not, you know, like I said before, what if you are wrong after all? People who say that God does not exist or it's not going to happen. What if you are wrong? If you are not wrong, okay, you have not lost. Which I know you are going to grow because the word of God about is the only thing that will stand forever. But I tell people, what if you are wrong? Eternity is in view. And when we're saying live daily, it's in view of tomorrow. That's why Jesus taught them, as it is in heaven, let it be on, on earth. There's still that reference to God. Amen. If you, can, if you live your daily life without reference in God, then it's not what we're talking about this morning. God is the center point, is the focal point. You know, is the, like I said earlier on, is that pillar, is the one that we are latching onto, is the one that never changes, is the one that we are depending on daily. So you must, look, there's no daily talk that we're discussing this morning that is outside of Jesus. He is the one that we need every single moment of our life that we are breathing. But let us just remember, the focus should not be on that eventual one. It's just like people who build houses. I can see architects and builders, they're not going to be over and losing sleep because they have a plan. They want to build a house, and the house is not going to, it's going to take maybe six months to come to, to reality. And you are disturbing yourself day and night about that house that has not come. What do you do every day? Brick upon brick. Mortar on mortar. Put the window at the right time. If you put it at the wrong time, something will start. Per time is the way we should approach our spiritual lives. 
brick upon brick. And what's that brick that God is giving you today? Is teaching you submission. Take it one day at a time. Because that day of victory will come where you will be testifying and be leading other young women and saying, once my mouth was, was fire, my mouth was pepper, but now I have learned, trusting the Lord every day, now I can tell other young women. And you, your experience may be different. Your, what you're going through may be different, but just learn to trust the Lord one day at a time. One day at a time. Someone say one day at a time. One day at a time. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. By the blood of the devil and is telling you, oh, tomorrow you're going to... Scripture says, even though I fall, I will rise up again. You see, the attitude is, is the mindset we're talking about. It's where your mind is. Who do you see yourself as? If the enemy comes to convince you that you're a woman, nobody will come and tell me and say, I'm a woman. No, matter, no matter what, even tell me, say, my body part is showing like a, I don't care. I am a man. You see? See, no matter what you try to present to me, you can even give me evidence and say, this one, I've seen that in women. Women have long eyelashes, and I can see little bit, I'm not trying to say anything, I'm not suggesting, but you know what I'm saying. Now, and they say, oh, you as a man, I, can, I don't care, I mean, I have a semblance of those things, but my identity is, I am a man. So no matter what the enemy comes to tell you, that's why this word, please, find yourself here. You will speak the word of God through people, as I'm saying, that. go back and check. What the Lord is saying to you concerning your life is what you should hold on to and never let it go. Do that on a daily basis. Because when the devil is going to come and attack your heart, your mind, your marriage, your home, your business, your work, the day that you're not expecting, if this word of God has been standing in there daily, it will guide you on that day. It's not that day I won't start. Lord, what did you say concerning anger? There was No, because daily I'm trusting God about the way my anger is getting the better of me. One, the devil that the enemy has determined, I'm going to destroy this man. The word of God will set you free. It's a daily walk. You and I don't know when that day is. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I don't have much time, and I'm just going to try and uh, tell us a few things just before we go. Because I noticed when Jesus was speaking to the disciples, when he went to pray, he brought out something very key, and that's what I want to, um, that's what I want to end with this morning. He was telling the disciples that, ah, I know that this spirit is winning, but your flesh is so weak. And I've been considering this flesh. You see, when we get God born again, this did we die. And can I just surprise or maybe shock some of us? This flesh in itself is not what dies. Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 13. And I'm just, you know, because I was looking at the expression of Paul. You know, Paul is the person who referenced a lot. Paul was saying, this thing that I don't want to do, I find myself doing it all the time. Now, the thing that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know that I should not, that I should be doing, I always stay away from those things. He said, what is happening to me? He's asking the question, what is going on in my heart? And he stumbled on verse 23. Let's read that together. Romans chapter 7, verse 23. Praise the name of the Lord. Because if we miss this, spiritual growth will be theory. But I pray, I pray this morning that it will not be theory in your life. Amen. That spiritual growth indeed, as you walk towards the Lord every day, something will be dropping in your system. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 7 verse 23. He said, Paul was even saying in verse 23, so frustrating. You know, so I said, but I, I love God. He said, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. If you come and search me, Lord, I know you can dissect me. You will see that I love you, but why am I doing this thing constantly? Verse 23 gave him the answer. He said, but I see another law. Someone say another law. Another law. There is always going to be another law. When you get born again, it was this same another law. Jesus is the son of God. On the way to the cross, how dare it be that Jesus said, if this call can roll over. What did the Lord come to do? To save us. So don't, don't, don't be discouraged. There is another law that works. But there is a victory in Romans chapter 8 verse 13. The Bible says, if you can through the spirit, mortify what? Is it the flesh? The deeds of the flesh. When those deeds come, those deeds come daily. It is a spiritual battle that we're in. We must not miss this. Like, is this period of spiritual battle? Beyond our physical eye, there are things we are not seeing. It is a spiritual battle. If you look at Rome, Ephesians 6, verse 12, when he was talking about spiritual wickedness and high places, do a small research about that. That is one of the low level spirits of the enemy that he uses to war against Christians on a daily basis, on a daily basis, and it's in their flesh. 
So this flesh, it is, when we're talking about seeking God daily, the flesh too will be coming daily. But I'm understanding that I am not what the flesh is telling me. What scripture is saying to you and me is mortify the deeds of the flesh. So you have not come to me today and you said to me, you are hungry. And this money that I just come to you is not yours. But nobody sees me and God knows that I'm hungry. I need to spend it. The deeds of the flesh is what that is called. But Bible says through the Spirit, and the Spirit of the Lord says, will I, will I not supply for you? Before you are fast, I know your need. Will you trust me? He said, Lord, I will trust you. He said, leave that money. Will you leave that money? That is the, that is the work in the Spirit that we are talking about. Paul said, I find it that there is another law. In where? Where is that other law? In my flesh. In my flesh. This is where it is. It is the, the, the spiritual growth every day as you are trusting God. One day at a time, the flesh still wants to come and present itself. You know, when God was in, in the book of Job, the enemy too came. In, 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 um, you know, like the Romans used to say, oh, you too, you did it. It came too. It will always come like that every day. But then the Bible says, through the spirit of God, we mortify the flesh. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. For uh, the weapons of our warfare, they are not what? Karma. Fleshly, they are not karma. But they are what? Mighty through my power. Through my strength. Through my experience. Through God. It can be subdued. But when you are not subduing today, don't worry about tomorrow. Just go back to the Lord. By the time you do, it's an habitual, it's an habitual thing. If you keep back to right, Romans chapter 8 verse 5 says, The people who walk according to flesh, what you see, the evidence that you see is fleshly things. They, 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 put, they set their minds on what? Fleshly things. When you set your mind on spiritual things, you'll be saying what? Spiritual things. Let it be. Practice it daily. Practice it daily. Before, I never used to know how to fast. If you talk fast, you want to kill me. It's not like when I don't eat. And you know what's funny? When we're not fasting, something is overwhelming me. Six, I don't even realize I'm not eating. But related to spiritual exercise. Yeah. You, even the, the intestines will be making those noises to remind you that, dude, you've not eaten. Yes, they didn't eat and there was no spiritual exercise. Yeah, that was different. Because he knows the important thing, the, the crucial thing. But when you practice fasting, sometimes, even when you food eventually, you may even be hungry, but it's not about, you know, your mind is on what? Spiritual things. On, until we learn as a church and as a people to value spiritual things, this spiritual growth will be theoretical. Value, valuing spiritual things. So Paul has said that, ah, is warring against the law of my mind. And that low level spirit in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 is looking at attacking our flesh as well. So something tells me here, the flesh is the issue. The issue is not the promise. The issue is not the promiser. The issue is not, it is not even uh, that my boss. The issue here is flesh. And the Bible has linked the flesh several times to desires. Look at James chapter 1 verse 14. God does not tempt any man, but through his own desires, is drawn away. This is the desire of our hearts, the desire. You see, when you look at a man, my Apostle Paul said there one time, if you want to see the desire of a man, maybe it might just be something that's subjective, you know, pardon me, but I found reality in what he said. He said, check his direct debit. Is it casino that you're seeing in there? If you see fuel, it's needful, that's not the problem. He's just saying, you can just see the heart of a man sometimes by the things he connects to. Praise the name of the Lord. So the desire, what is your desire? Where is my desire? Do you desire and value spiritual things? Then you can start... Be ready. Be ready because spiritual things are going to be virtuous to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But until we learn to value spiritual things, Esau did not value spiritual things. So when they presented spirituality to him, he said, what is that? Can you not hear those ones making noise? Give me food. And after the food, per adventure, he came back and said, ah, where's my girlfriend? The Bible said he sorted with tears. He knew that it was important, but he didn't value it. It's something with tears, but it could no longer get it. We would, that would not be an expense in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's just go back and say, God, I want to value spiritual things. And it is on a daily basis. I'm not, I trusted you, Lord, I want to trust you again today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. It's not a one time. It's not when you feel to do so. It's constant every day. Praise the name of the Lord. So what should we then do if desire is the main problem? This is where I close. What should we do with our desires? Four very quick points. Praise the Lord. Tame it. Tame it. You see, if through the Spirit, Romans chapter 8, verse 13, you will mortify the deeds of the flesh, what you are doing is you are taming it. You see, when the flesh is coming, that time that I said I had an issue with fasting, 
when I needed to fast, all I was doing to my body was I was staining it. So my desire is telling me you need food, and I'm saying, no, I know I need food, but it's not making me go. I'm just developing in different places all over the place. And I know that where I'm supposed to develop, which is the spirit, I am lean. It's not important to me right now. So on that basis, please, will you keep quiet? What I am doing there is I am taking it. In our experience on a daily basis, you will need that time to be courageous and tame the voice of the flesh. This flesh, the Bible tells me in Galatians chapter 5, that is always constantly warring against the spirit. He doesn't like me. I have physically said it to myself, I said, this spirit, you hate me. Because the flesh does not like us. The flesh just wants to please his master, the father of flesh. He just wants to please the desire that are contrary to the will of God for my life. But I must stand sometime and say, Lord, I know that you've given me a neighbor by the Holy Spirit. I choose, it's a choice. There's one short seven minute video that's changed my life from 2014. That that man said, I can't remember his name now, but it was, it was so overwhelming. He just said, as a Christian, you can actually use the word and say, I will not go that way, it's a choice. I will not do that thing, it's a choice. It's a choice, but you would not say those things if you don't value spiritual things. Take your desire. And the, one of the strongest we can take my desire is prayer and fasting. It's not usually a popular topic, but Jesus, when the desire was coming, said, Lord, if it's possible, can we just reconsider this uh, discussion? I'm just paraphrasing by the way. He said, but nevertheless, not at my will, but yours. You know what Jesus was doing? He was taming it. And then also fasting. When you fast, you are desensitizing yourself from the things that your, your flesh likes. Over time, you will no longer like those things. Some of us we can relate to you here. There are foods we liked before. I would say, there's no way I can live without this food. One day they gave us medical report and said you have to be eating this thing. And you eat it daily, 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 daily. and the, that thing is the most bitter thing ever. You say it's very sweet. What has happened to you? Over time, your body has changed. Your taste body has changed. It can happen spiritually, but we need to tame it. This is what I'm telling you today, brethren. I, so, I say this with sincerity in my heart and with humility. This is an experience I am getting. And this is what the Lord is putting in my heart to say. Say, tame those desires. Because we we'll always have desires. We have needs, so desires will come. But when those desires come, I want to check which one is the Lord speaking. Which one is my own desire there? Which one is my flesh? Praise the name of the Lord. Because there are appeals in the world today. There are many, many appeals here and there. But you must be able to say, God, even though this thing looks right, the Bible says there are many ways that seem right to a man, but the end is destruction. So God, this thing is a desire in my heart. Uh, and I know it's a good thing. You can desire to bless somebody with money. But in your heart, the desire has not been, you know, the desire in itself, we're going to get it. Praise the Lord. Let me not jump over myself. The second one, which is what I'm about to say, is scan it. Scan those desires. You know when you scan something through something, you want to check. Scan it through the word of God. That's all I'm going to say. Scan every desire through the word of God. You may desire to give someone something, and the Lord is telling you that that thing, what's in your heart, there is no humility in there. And he's saying, so don't do it, or do it my way. Will you obey? Spiritual goods of our obedience. That's why I learned Raven Hills. For some of you who know that great missionary back in those days in England, he said that maturity is not about age, but about practicing obedience. Practicing obedience. So scan Why? Your desire I'm scanning my desires daily with the word of God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The third one is be mindful of those desires. You see, it is when you know about desires that you can even make decisions. Watch it. Watch those desires. Before they overgrow. You see, don't let it go one mile. It's the word the Spirit of the Lord is saying. This is from personal experience. Don't let it go one mile. Watch those desires. And you will be thinking to yourself, oh, no, 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 it can't be curtailed. No, it can't be. Watch it. Because those desires, the end of it, you see the spiritual host of, wicked, spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places, what they are looking to do is to make sure that you are frustrated on a daily basis. You see, there are principalities and powers. That's the highest realm of spiritual de demons. And he's talking about, you know, um, in, in, if you look at Romans chapter 6, there are about four categories of them. That last one is that one that was against us daily in this flesh. But if we are mindful of it, we'll be able to. You see, the people in the world, when they're going for like football training or football match, they are checking their opponent's strategy, way of playing. It's the same thing for us. That as Christians, you settle down, you calculate and see, why, why do you think they watch one uh, Nigeria would go and watch Ghana play? Ah, it, would they, anything you're seeing on TV, they would they, 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 they necessarily do the same thing? No. But they are looking at how their formation is. They are looking at how they are attacking. And they are saying, if they, are, if they attempt, if they dare do it this way, this is our answer for it. It's like the game of chess. 
I'm anticipating your move, so this is what I have prepared. If you should bring this, or if you bring option this, or if you bring that's being mindful of your desires. Praise the name of the Lord. And lastly, in closing, surrender it. Someone say surrender it. Surrender it. Surrender it. This can be one of the most difficult things to do. But what God is saying to us is for us to grow spiritually until you say, Father, I surrender it all. You see what Paul said in Romans. Does anyone have the Living Bible here, please? The Living Bible. TLB. I might have to bring it myself because I just love the way he puts it there. The Living Bible. I'm going to read Philip. Oh, does someone have it? Okay. Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to read verse 9 to 10. I thought I was going to get it. Just permit me. Or can someone read, uh, read the NIV version? And then hopefully I can have the Living Bible version as well. NI or NLT. Does anyone have NLT, please? Living Bible. Praise the Lord. Um, can you read Philippians chapter 3 and verse 9 to 10 so we can close? And become one with him. No longer counting on being seen by a thing, by being good enough, or by obeying God's laws, but by trusting Christ to save me. For God's way of making us right with Himself depends on faith, counting on Christ alone. Verse 10. Now I have given up everything else. Now I have given up everything else. I have found it to be the only way to really know Christ. And to experience the mighty power that brought him back to life again. And to find out what it means to suffer and to die with him. Praise the Lord. He said, I have found it to be the only way to know Christ. Spiritual growth in the month of February, in the month of March. And we're still going to be growing. But Paul is saying, giving up all. I have found it to be the only way to know the power of Christ. So you want to experience a spiritual growth or, or the power of God or the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm constantly being, I'm being stopped by you. You are, not, you are in the way. Your desires are in the way. You, are, you, are, you know too much. You know the young children, the reason why they are just growing and in learning is because every day they are trusting that whatever you told them is correct. So they run with it. I remember when my daughter is just frustrating me on certain things. I just stop her oh, What's that thing called? It's called, it's called? it's called trousers. And it's not called trousers. <laughs> but just leave me alone kind of thing. And I used to tell my wife, let's not do this. Because she'll go out there and say, this is trousers. <laughs> because they are trusting that what I'm saying is correct. So they are good running with it. But God is saying, you know too much. Every time I'm trying to speak, you are talking. Your spirit is not settled. It's not calm. You say you want to know me daily, but I'm speaking to you daily. You are not listening. You say, God daily? Yes. Yesterday, did I not ask you not to even just say a word? So no, that's Monday. No, it's me saying it to you. Don't call what I say is holy unholy. This is the word of the Lord to us. Say, surrender it. You are in the way. We will not stop God. Let's rise up on our feet this evening and uh, this morning. We're just going to be praying. It's a spiritual battle. If we have talked about so many things. Permit me for the sake of time. We have talked about so many things in the month of, uh, you know, in the last few weeks as pastor has been helping us. But we want to end by knowing and understanding we are in the spiritual atmosphere. And the spiritual will always be greater than the physical. There's no one here that is greater than the enemy. There's no one here that is, when I say greater than the enemy, there's no one here that, that has lived longer than the enemy. You're not to be able to ba battle with him. But your advantage is Christ in you. So we're going to be praying this morning. And asking God for help, divine help. Yesterday is gone. Today, God, is when I'm coming to you and I'm in need. Give me the strength that I need for the day. I'm, God, I choose from this day forward not to worry about my tomorrow like I'm hopeless. I choose from this day forward to trust you daily with the hope that one day, like, the, like, the, like your word says, that we don't know what we shall be like, but we know what is certain. When you come, we shall be like you. Lord, help me. I am tired of trying to figure out my life. I am tired of trying to figure things out myself. By strength, the Bible says, no man can prevail. But Lord, today, from the word that you have spoken to my heart, help me to trust you daily. If you are here and your heart is not right with the Lord, 
the daily work will be frustrating. But if you want the Lord to, 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 to bring an absolute change, begin from your heart. Just right where you are, and the Spirit of the Lord is moving now, He said, I am calling you. Will you start first of all by heeding to me? Heeding to my word, heeding to my call. To say, Lord, I don't want to miss it anymore because of my foolish ways or of my desires. But I want to learn to trust you. If you're that person, they just say this prayer within your heart and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I am, I am giving up everything. Because I am now discovering that it is the only way that I can truly have the power of Christ being at work in my life. Thank you for yesterday. Today is another day. And I will keep trusting you for my tomorrow. Lord, you are faithful. And I no longer want to trust in my flesh or in the arm of my flesh. Help me today, Lord. Help me to maximize the what you have given me per time, per day. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. For we know that your word has been sown on good ground. And will yield multiple fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your word this day. May I gain from it as everyone here will gain from it. In the name of Jesus. Amen.